the camera slowly revolving around the Duacrima Outlook research station in the darkness of space and we slowly zoom in through the walls of the station thick and metallic into the hydro access room there is the hiss of valves the moving of gears and the pumping of machines you don't exactly know what they do the only solid thing you understand is that they run the ship's water systems thus making them quite uh, noisy and mechanical aside from that inside this room is both director LaSalle and officer Landon uh, all right so looks like we can get in over here uh, as you see yeah the pressure is low due to lockdown still a long way yeah well I did some swim training back in the Marines, so I should be all right. How long can you hold your breath? Ah, uh, um, university gold medal. Yeah, gold medal in what? Swimming. Okay, just making sure. All right, well. What's the plan when we get on the other side? What happens if we see one of those things, the thing you saw, right when we get out. We can't. We can't fight it. We can't. We can't fight it. Okay, so we just I'm, look, take a breath, turn I'm around, and get back. Absolutely shocked that they've even gotten out. Like someone had to have let them out. They can't get out themselves. I don't know how many are out. How many are still uh, locked up? How many could there be? If worst case scenario, everything failed. Let's just say it was sabotaged. Everything failed. How many? Worst case scenario. It, it's exponential. Uh, Realistically, seven. Fuck. It's a worst case scenario, but they will just keep prop game. Right. Okay. That's... It's gonna be hard for Ben to release one. We've seen one. You know, there's some on the other side of the station. Yeah. They, um... They stalk. We've... We've measured them hunting in packs, but in in close quarters, they mostly seem to stalk. They they seem to I don't think communicate is the right word, but they they seem to understand basic goals. I assume that is just genetic they, bred into them. Basic pack instinct. We've not seen, you know, a leader, an alpha. Yeah, let's hope the alpha's not on the side we're going on then. Um, there's... So we've been testing. Um, there are other... There are other experiments, lab creatures. There. We're trying to see how they... They propagate. They don't necessarily need a human host. Oh, great. But we know that they can propagate through humans. Wonderful. It's just a parasite that doesn't give a shit what it is. It's beautiful, really. Yeah, all this death has been just, just top notch. No, I, their ability to survive, obviously, not people dying. Let's hope our abilities are 
better evolved than... We have the other hand. We can think, we can cogitate, we can properly communicate. This yeah, is our nice. station. This isn't their station. At the moment, it seems like theirs. Just saying. So, let's fix that. I'll lock this down. We're gonna... Purge the experiments. We're gonna fix this. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've got... I have the bag of food, so once we can lock it down, we can hunker and survive until the help you called gets here. There are stores in the lab. Um, okay, that's good too. Water is still running. Low power, but we can... Doors should work. Alright, good. Also, the <sighs> lockdown should trigger safe spaces for us to hide in. Right. Preferably ones that don't have vent access. Might have to consider that too. De we definitely have to consider that. Are you kidding me? Some of them are going through vents. The little ones, at least. The ones that cause the big ones. I told you, when they're small, they are vulnerable. Right. And if they're small and they happen to sneak up on you, we're vulnerable. Still have to stop access. We could... We'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, just saying. Just trying to think big here, alright? I'd like us Wait. to get out of here. We need to get through. Yes. Alright. <sighs> I need to protect that silk. Sorry. Uh, okay. I can take lead. Uh... Unless you'd like to. <laughs> Go ahead. Right. Okay. I begin to undo. Yeah, you walk over to the pipe, and there's a kind of valve-looking wheel, which you uh, start to turn and engage. As you do, a little bit of water kind of like through the hatch just like sprays out. <sighs> drenches you a little bit, but... Great. The cold. Of course, it's cold. Um, as you do, the the valve is just a, a little bit um, uh, stiff. It squeaks a bit. It's just a bit, mm -hmm. you know. Everything on the station, to a degree, is a little run down. But you you get it done decently. Um, as you flip the hatch open, uh, you see another wheel on the inside, and um, the water. Good pressure has essentially eased it off and it's not as it's not pushing it quite as hard so the water is flowing through slowly um, yeah. you see anything no thankfully just water um we should shut this behind us i know that's not the best what feeling if we can't get through let me come back and open it i'll test and I test the inside wheel just to make sure. Yeah. The inside wheel is a little bit stiffer, a little bit slower, but still movable. We don't have to seal it, seal it. You said they're not that smart, so as long as we shut it behind us, that's all I'm saying. Safety. We don't know if these... Can they swim? Do you Have you done tests on that yet? What, they... They can at least traverse through water. All right, so we definitely well. want to shut it, because I do not want to be in here with one of those things. We haven't seen them use door handles, so... That's why I'm saying just shut it. Don't have to seal it. All right, so shut it behind you. I'll go in. Just... I dive. And you drop into the water and start moving with the current down this dark... Uh, they like there's very small amount of vision you have when you have your eyes open uh and austin i assume you follow directly after i i make sure i fully limber up and like stretch out my hamstrings and and then i just uh slowly lower myself in and just do like a little half turn of the valve and then just let the 
But I move with the current. Yeah. Five seconds, ten seconds. The the pipes are fairly large, large enough for you to comfortably fit in, but it's still very dark and it's very compact, even still. As you push your way through the water and you can't see the end in sight, so you just have to keep pushing and pushing. 20 seconds. You're still fine, you're still going, and after maybe 25 seconds, you finally think you see a little uh, blurry kind of like um, metallic bump in the side of above you and the pipe. You get to it and put your hands on it and you're like, yes, this is the valve to open and you start to twist and it's not budging. It appears to be a little bit stuck, a little bit um, maybe rusted possibly. And at, 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 after a couple of seconds of kind of messing with it, like trying to move it, uh, the director like, you feel like a little bump on the back of your feet as the director uh, gets to you. Uh, you feel a little bit of give uh, on the on the water wheel, but as you're applying that pressure, as you're you're struggling with it, and uh, the darkness is helping you. A little bubble of air escapes and you start to feel your vision slowly blur a little bit as you put you put in a final push and it goes and it twists and it turns and you finally it starts to open you feel your vision start to fade you feel yourself starting to lose consciousness uh director LaSalle you see this happening as the it finally twists and you feel a little bit of a rush of water as the same thing happens and you see that Landon has passed out but the valve itself, the, the hatch, is ready to be opened. Okay, so I swim forward and I just push Landon uh, out the way yeah, and I just do slightly. the final sort of quarter turn as I push it forward yeah. and open the, the valve. The uh, hatch bursts open and... You can see light kind of pour in. Okay, so I I go up and I <gasps> and then I go back under and I'm gonna grab Landon by his collar and just pull him up yeah. through. You grab Landon, you hoist him out of the of the water, and he kind of like semi falls out onto the metal floor. And there's a little wet slap. Landon. <sighs> Like slapping around the face, Landon. Hmm. I check his pulse. Do you think there's a pulse? A bit faint. Okay. Um. So I'm gonna like straddle his chest yeah. and um start trying to apply CPR yeah. on his chest. What? Sunshine, with your cries going unanswered, pounding on the door, you hear a heavy footfall behind you. And as you turn round, you see this, again, tall, imposing, strange alien creature slowly moving towards you, the tail flicking along the metal, causing a scraping sound. As you look around, you see the offices next to the alien, the mainframe to your right, um, toilets to your left. And you realize it's moving slowly towards you, getting ready for a pounce or a... I'm gonna run into the mainframe. You turn and hit the button, and as you start to move, it does too. The door slides open, and you jump into it. As the door slides behind you, hitting the button, you hear 
maybe a second after the door closes, this kind of like thump and this hissing and scraping of metal. Um, they're gonna go. You look around the mainframe. You were here earlier. Um, it has consoles and um, things like that, but in the uh, corner of the room, it has a small out outlined area, which is the uh, maintenance access. And I can, can I get under the the, the, the grill in, 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 in into that? Yeah, you can. You have got the security access so that your code will open the uh, maintenance uh, little panel that slides open. Uh, you in input your code, and there's a quick uh, succession of beeps, uh, which are quite loud in the silence, causing the door again to get a few thumps and a few. You can hear like scraping of metal as the access panel opens. You start to lower yourself down into the dark metal square that is the maintenance access. And the panel slides closed. You hear echoing from somewhere a sharp cut-off scream. And you hear above you the thumps of something quite heavy walking away, most likely down that corridor and back towards the main central area. Take stock for a second, and you have a very, very low lit, almost dark uh, maintenance tunnels that go forward and right, and these are used essentially to uh, upkeep certain systems, electronics, this type of thing. Okay. Um. <laughs> I just want to follow the wires to see where it goes. Okay. Well, uh, you start kind of crouch walking forwards. It's quite small, but it's not. It's not as tight as the ventilation shafts. Uh, and you start moving forwards as you come to essentially like a T section. I'm assuming that you want to be careful. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna like try and very quietly look ahead and try and look down each side. Um doesn't seem to be anything, but it's hard to see extremely far. Um uh. Um Gonna go left. Go left and you keep moving down. Um, as you do, you come to another T section where you can keep going straight or there's a right turn. Um I went Okay, right. I'll keep me on the same path. I'll probably take you to the gym cafeteria underneath there somewhere in that direction. Um well I'll, I'll go very right. Um as you start to move towards the right you can hear very slightly uh very soft kind of like almost um organic like sucking sound. It sounds almost like water moving through a pipe or something along those lines. Um, from what you can tell, it is down the direction you're headed now. Do I hear any clicking? Not currently. Uh, 
Maybe this running water. Water. I'm gonna need water if it's two to three weeks. Man. I'm gonna go towards that noise. Um, as you keep crouch walking forwards uh, towards the sound of water, uh, as you get closer, you see this kind of um, like it, obstruction in the in the maintenance tunnel. It's this kind of big, uh, lumpy mass of shadow. Um, as you get closer and closer, you realize that it's moving very, very slightly. Um, just about the time you stop is when it almost is in view. It is actually got that kind of shimmery black shine that you've seen once before on the thing in the hallway that almost got you. Um, and it is a big bulbous mass of, of kind of lump. And you can see that what you previously thought was just it is also possibly a person. Um, the mouth of this thing is open with this long extended kind of tube type things attached to what looks like a person who you hope very much is no, no longer alive as you see the, the tube like pumping it appears to be just draining this person of blood and I will ask you um, as you make your next move to please roll me your mobility. I'm gonna try and very silently oh. walk backwards until I can get to the T-junction and turn around. Okay. You quietly to knock anything, not to make too much noise. And then you get back to the T-junction. The thing itself has faded, but too much noise is very possible. It will bring it to you. Okay. Uh, I guess I'm going to go straight instead of that right turn towards whatever that is. You carry on in the other direction, making care now that you know there's at least one of them in here, to head down the straight, which eventually, after uh, 30 seconds just moving straight down it, turns to the right, uh, is a corner, and heads to the right. Then appear around the corner. As you peer around the corner, uh, you see what looks in the distance to be a person. They are very slightly lit by the access panels, lights, uh, red lights that are um, illuminating them ever so slightly. They are also have a uh, what appears to be a small flame that they're using to uh, inspect themselves. And <laughs> after a couple of seconds, the uh, there's a cough and water kind of splutters out of his mouth. And I just fall over to the side. <laughs> oh. for a second. Oh. Thanks. Oh. That's chest. Oh, I'm sore, but I think that's the point. I've never given CPR before. Uh, I must have not been out long. 
It doesn't usually work. <sighs> yeah, really? <sighs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, well, it worked. Uh, we're here. The fucking valve was stuck. Of course it was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kim. Shit. <sighs> what am I going to do, leave you there? <laughs> You could have. <laughs> As you're getting your bearings, you um, realize that you are in the uh, the foyer uh, maintenance access, uh, just past the central area for the uh, for the controls that control the elevator. Um, you're in the lab section. You've got past both the blast doors as a piece of extra information you do have the blast doors are down on this side as well restricting access into the central controls for the elevator and uh the doors going into the uh main lab area where you have all the labs and offices is currently closed you don't know if it's also blocked but there are no blast doors or anything. okay we're in the fire yeah there's maintenance okay. there Okay, yeah, I see. Uh, uh, I look up, um, do the vents in here look yeah. broken? No. No. But I go and check the body that was bleeding under the blast door. That's on the other side of the blast doors. So it's in the... Ah, uh, I was in the hallway. Area. I see, I see. Good, okay. All right, well... This looks, uh, relatively unscathed. Yeah. Yeah. Hit the door button. Oh shit, we didn't... Okay. I wanted to know how the fuck the other one got into the hallway. <laughs> Let's just hope it wasn't the way we got in. <laughs> <laughs> that means they can open and shut doors. There is oxygen access. Um, uh, in the middle we got the main lift. That's huge. Okay, true, true, true. All right. <sighs> okay, well, I'll check the halls. Stay here for a second. Hit the button, see if the door works. Oh, okay, yeah. As you hit the button, there is a um, robotic beep, a couple of beeps that indicate that the door is restricted. Security access is four and above. That's a good thing I'm level four. I punch in my code and hit the button again. You put in your code and uh, hit the button and the doors uh, softly slide open with a hiss. Uh, looking out into the uh, hallway and the main labs area, the like with this room, the lighting is low, emergency power, um, Reserve power, red lighting. Can't Everything see seems quiet. I look and check my corners. Um, as down to the right, looked up to the left next. As you kind of like look out and uh, look down the left, look down the right. Uh, looking down the right, the hallway uh, goes off. That is the way down uh, the halls to the administrator's office, to the director's office. Um, there doesn't seem to be anything down that way with a quick glance. As you look down to the left, you see a similar thing. It heads to carbon dating, to chemistry, and to the lab storage areas. Uh, you do, however, see um, small pools of, like, dark red. Um, and and there's a, there's a couple of, like like scratches and scrapes across the walls maybe it's a quick look so you don't get everything it's enough for you to be like okay there's there's some blood on the floor then yeah all right okay my way looks clear but toward carbon dating there's signs of uh blood and scratches so they're in here close the door close the door Yeah. Okay, so they're out. No, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
Let's, and I don't, I know you don't like it, but this is what we have to do. We have to assume there's seven of them. That unfortunately is the safest plan we have. We have to assume that there are seven of them lurking around here, hunting individually, as you said. Okay. Hopefully there's not, but we're gonna assume there are. Okay, power access that way. It's Carbondale that way. My office is over there. It's... It's the, honestly, the closest thing outside of power access, which is good. That's very good for us. Well, we, there's offices ahead, but if, yeah. they're, if they're out, if all of them are out, mm -hmm. don't go through the hallway. Okay, so we should slip through the offices then. Give us little rooms to at least pop into and hide if we need to. Let me think, let me think. Sheepy, I'd like to look around for um, maintenance access to see if we can maybe circumvent going into the main hallway to get to a different room. Yeah. Um... There is a maintenance access fence that go down uh, kind of through the station and none of them um, none of them come out in an office or anything like that, but they come out uh, in the uh, in the floor like nearby. So you can kind of come up at certain uh, intersections in the hallways and closer. I will say however, as you're as everything is quiet and you're considering this and you're looking around you hear a metallic bending of metal like something is moving up above you through one of the grates in the fence it's not directly above you but you hear the echo of that metal folding as something is moving through the vents and you hear it move and move and you hear it getting a bit quieter and a bit quieter and then nothing <sighs> yeah yeah okay vents are a no go yeah uh, you see that hatch yeah yeah that's maintenance yeah um following I think every hallway there are these smaller, they're like for maintenance to get through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, I've seen. But there are blast doors every couple of meters. In the, in the maintenance access? Well, there's, there's maintenance access all around, but we can get through there and maybe we can, none of those will come up in any of the rooms, but maybe we can move a little okay. closer. And we also, look and peek too. Okay. The blast doors should be closed in case of depressurization, so it should be safer than the vents. Yeah, oh, well, definitely safer than the vents. I think anything is safer than the vents now. I, I'm not making a run through it through that corridor. That's no maintenance. I think is a good call. I think that's good. Um. If we could, if there's one, does there, is there an access that if you remember, uh, does one pop up like in the middle of the offices? No, none will go through. Well, they might go under an office, but there'll be no entrance. That's what I mean, office. though. Yeah, but like, uh, if I remember right, we've got the, with this, the four offices and, and, main, and your office is below those. There's one that meets in the, the cross section of the offices. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely a hatch there. Okay. That's the one I was thinking, because if I go in, I can go and very quietly just peek and get an idea, and then come back and I can report to you what I see. Okay, no, no. We know. We can't split up. No, you're right. You're right. No, if you're we right. move section by section, yeah. check each section, yeah. move to the next one, secure the one behind us, we can at least get, so we can see a straight shot to my office. Yeah, okay. No, that's a good call. <sighs> All right. Um. So, the uh, maintenance access panels 
um, are a kind of metallic uh, square that has a door, a uh, kind of hatch that slides open. It also has a, a an access panel that will engage it. Neither of you have used these, obviously, as this is for maintenance for engineers. They use this. It's essentially go fix this thing. It's under there, and you go. Luckily, um, you have the access codes. It is something that you would both always uh, have and probably have memorized. So easy enough to initiate it. I and did you uh, any cigarettes? Mine are soaked. Uh, yeah, the one cigar that you gave me is nice and wet. If you want it. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted to quit anyway. Those things will kill you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they will. They're, they're definitely going to watch your lungs. Might have to swim through more vents. <sighs> I uh, unshoulder the wet bag that has the uh, rations and water thankfully sealed, and I leave them here. Don't need them at this point. I can come back for them later. <sighs> Okay. Kind of very tight down there. Yeah, I, that's why I don't want this with me. Have a look at that panel. Yeah. Just gonna um, put in the code to the panel and just check that the codes work. Yeah, um, you put in the code and hit the uh, enter button. And as you do, uh, the uh, panel itself lights up slightly around a couple of small red lights light up and the panel itself lets out a couple of loud electric uh, beeps, almost like a, an alarm of something, of something um, uh, activating. And as it does, you hear that metallic sound above you again, very quickly, like scurrying, like something's moving very quickly and it comes louder and louder. Get in. I'm grabbing, I'm gonna grab Landon and pull him in with me. Well, the, the hatch hasn't opened yet. Oh, okay. It's doing the... So it, um, it, it does that, those beeps, and at the same time, that metallic noise, the kind of shuffling, the scraping, the bending of metal, comes closer and closer and then stops. And the hatch slides slowly open, and you have access to the, to the maintenance. I'm going to slowly follow him in. So you both slowly lower yourself down. Slowly and quietly. And you kind of have to turn to, like, take the little ladder down. Uh, I'm going to um, put the code in on this side to close the thing. Um, I, I would say as you slowly go down, you're kind of looking up and out. You see from the vent... A small trickle of like this strange slime just slowly drip down as you get down activate the and it slowly slides close uh, Jim you hear a uh, noise off down the tunnel and you can probably see a very small amount of movement just at the edge of the tunnel there forward to you um, stops a little bit a ways 
uh, but you can now see each other properly and you recognize each other. Uh, sunshine, doctor, gym, maintenance. Um, I could use your help. I try and just turn myself as best I can so that my injury is towards the dock. This hurts a lot. Injured on his right side, hip, thigh area. I can't. I'm not, not a doctor. I, 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 I can't. Yep. That, that's great and all, but even just drugs would be real neat right about now. Uh, and then. Oh, anything you can do at all. <laughs> real, real good right about now. <laughs> yeah, even that. Yep, just whatever. How, how, should I should I try and pull this out, or does it? No, does, does don't, it... don't touch it. Okay. I'm gonna make it. As you're doing that, uh, Sunshine, could you make a metal aid roll, please? I'm gonna move this up his leg carefully over the shrapnel, and then I'm gonna twist it tight. Above, above the shop. Yeah. I'm sorry, I know that hurts, but we need to stop it bleeding. And you're going to feel reduced sensation, and it's going to go tingly in that leg, because the blood's not going to be flowing to it as well as before. But I need, I need you not to, not to bleed out. Um, I, I don't have a lot. And it's fine. Um, uh, we need to move, probably. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I got some for the pain. Um, yep. Did I? Did I have my little satchel back with me? You did manage to keep your hands on it. Yes. Yeah, um. Yeah. Drop some I am morphine. Um, yeah, well, that'd be great. <laughs> um, and... um, I'm gonna. This is gonna have to go on the inside of your thigh. Okay. Yeah, yeah right, that's fine. Okay. Uh, I need you to like squeeze that 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 bit of your thigh and make it like a nice lump for me. Okay. Okay. Um. It'll only, st- it'll only sting a little bit. It's a very thin needle. It won't, it's not going to hurt as much as it. Okay. Whatever you're ready. Okay. And the sensation, the pain, a little nice flow of uh, warmth <laughs> eases things slightly, makes it easier to think. All right. Okay. Uh, it'll take about five to ten minutes and that should kick in. I've got limited mm-hmm. morphine. So I'll give you mm-hmm. five mil for now. If you start to feel dizzy or nauseous, mm-hmm. let me know. Because then I've got to knock in you. Okay. Because okay. um, this will tank your blood pressure if I give you too much, especially if you're bleeding. Do you have a plan? Worth a shot. Um, They've contacted the military. No. Two, to th- two to three weeks. If if we make it till then. Um, There's no way. Lord, those things. There's. 
All right. Um, I know there's some other people that might need help. Okay. Are you up for it? Okay. All right. They're they're you know, locked up in VIP, so okay. we can head there and. You know, they might be injured, too. Oh. Okay. Um, as long as we stay as Greek, I go left, ice, in. Yeah. I'll be left alone again. Peace. All right, well, I'll lead the way then, and you follow. You? Just... Be quiet and uh Yeah. Sorry. It's alright. Let's just let's just keep moving, okay? Okay. Alright. This this way slowly does it. You've uh left <clears throat> a small uh thin sheet of uh metal in the hatch so that you don't have to activate it again it'll just open up as you uh, shimmy it. it means it doesn't do that beeping uh, draw anything towards you and the hatch slides open again <clears throat> starting with jim you pull yourself out look around for a second and then get out of the way so sunshine can also get up uh, needless to say it's a little bit difficult with your leg but mm -hmm. get it done. Lean on me if you need to. I'll be, I'll be fine. Um, are you, are you hurt? Is that yours or? Not mine. Hey. Um. Okay. Um. I'm going to take a quick glance around to see if there's anything I could use as a crutch, just immediately. Nothing that stands out. There's tables, chairs, there's some gym equipment. Um... What about the barbell? Yeah. Hit the weights yeah. off it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'll make a makeshift walking bowl out yeah. of a out I'm going to unscrew the weights off the end and slide them off screw them slide them off there's a small clink uh, not enough to make a, a lot of noise but enough to jangle both of your nerves as you take the the weights off and you can use this as a makeshift crutch to hold your weight yeah. Yeah. Uh, we need to dampen the sound at the bottom of it <sighs> yeah it's fine um I'll, I'll grab like a rag and some tape from my Throw pack and just put it on the end of it. And yeah, tighten it up. All right. Um, I don't know how many of those things there are. There's different sizes. I've seen one on someone's face. I've seen. Mm. I was like medium size, and it like almost like plugged into him. Those. I saw something small. It made like a clicking, like, a, like noise, and that burst out of someone. The the one with the, the face thing, like it's like it had hatched something and it cocooned out. Um, it's a massive one. Eight eight foot tall. Looks like a big praying mantis. Heavy. I what nearly she... got one of them. What did that look like? Big and ugly, mostly. Um, I blew up some stuff, but I wasn't strong enough. <laughs> For myself, worse than I got it, I think. Oh. This is a tall one. It's got like a 
Like a scorpion tail? Yeah, like a it's... thing that it was trying to get me with. Um, it's it's stabbed through Jane. Skewered her. Yeah, I've seen some pretty I don't think we can survive two weeks. We need water and a place with no vents or other access and a door we can barricade. And we've got to wait it out. Is there anywhere like that on here? Well, there's, there are some places you can make like that, but it don't... Uh, they, they, well, let's get to the others. Okay. The more people thinking about this, the better, and then we can send yeah. people out, gather supplies, and we can pull up somewhere. I'll find somewhere. Okay. Um, if one of them appears... You go I'll only slow you down, so No with strength in numbers, we're not leaving each other. Until we get the numbers then. D one you run. Okay, let's Okay. Let's be slow. And let's be quiet. And you slowly move towards the door. Push the button to slide it open. Thankfully, it's been well maintained. And the door slides open. You hear distant clanks and general station noises. You don't hear anything for a moment that sounds out of place. But then you hear like a, the bending of metal. Like something's moving above you, somewhere, moving away, away, until it fades out. Let's move, for now. And you move forward, out, into the main lobby area around the circular bit to the entrance to the stairs still nothing slowly up the stairs trying to make as little noise as possible until you get to the top you start to hear like some grunting uh, some clangs of metal and you hear a voice emergency lockdown is in effect Please return to your rooms and do not resist. Sebastian. It sounds like it's coming from the uh, top end of the habs, near the hab cubicles. And the sounds of like, kind of grunting and struggling. You hear a couple of people say, get him. Um, it sounds like there's a few people attacking him. Are those your people? There are any people we need anyone right now, but I'm I'm not good in a fight right now. <laughs> Especially not not against Sebastian if he They're they're gonna draw everything over there. They're, they're gonna pull it they're gonna pull them all this way making noise. You hear that sound again, although this time it's from further down below you maybe under the under your feet of metal bending, moving quicker this time and it moves past you and then down towards that sound of struggling and shouting. Is that the same place as our suspected VIP area? No, that's uh, off towards the top of the area the hab cubicles. You're mm. down to the bottom area to the south. In the opposite direction, essentially. If the... If if, 
If they're stupid enough to try and fight Sebastian. Yeah. Well, the it'll give us space to get to the others. We gotta. Go, we we go. have to make we have to make a smart choice. They'll make noise. Move quickly, but quietly. Moving a bit quicker. Yeah. Pick, pick up the pace and you exit the stairs area moving south past the uh, break room the VIP washroom uh, and then down along a corridor for a little bit pausing for a second just to make sure there are no sounds and you enter the executive bedroom area to the, one of the centre rooms where the door is closed you know it's been barred but you know a quick little uh, staccato tap on the door um, we'll let them know that you're about to enter so that they don't immediately attack you. Uh, you do a quick tap on the door and then hit the button. The door slides open slowly and you move to go in and stop. As you realize that the three people, your friends who were holding this room, have strange things on their faces as they are semi lying down or, or slumped against the wall and they appear to have uh, their faces covered with this strange material creature thing that's wrapped around their neck and has grabbed their faces. quietly move forward. The maintenance access tunnels have low red lighting like the other parts of the station. Um, as you can slowly walk through this uh, almost... You can almost stand up in it, but not quite. It, you have, do have to crouch walk and you do make your way through. You come to different points. I will say as well, initiating a new access panel will give the emergency noise and as you have most likely both realized that noise is an activator so okay we we we, we can't take any wrong turns nope no we can't <sighs> ah, fuck why did they make them so loud they didn't seem that loud before so the maintenance <sighs> the maintenance tunnels uh, follow the hallways, the access panels where you can enter and exit the maintenance tunnels are at the intersections of the hallways. So, um, along with a couple, uh, one comes up in the break room, uh, one comes up in the middle of the off offices, uh, one a couple come up outside the administrator's office to each side, and you can find, you can find your way through reasonably easily. Okay. Yeah. We can go. If we go down there, we'd be in the middle of a canteen. That's yeah. a wide open area. Yeah. That doesn't sound good. No, we can no, it is not. Down there, there are two access hatches either side of my office. Mm. But we'd have to walk around to get to the office. If we go this way, when we come up through, we should be able to see the door to my office. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it's going to make a... that fucking noise. Yeah, I have an idea on that. I don't, it's not a good idea, but it might be a better one. <sighs> you be ready here to open that access. I'm going to quietly go to the other side as far down as I can and punch in the code there. And while it's doing its thing, come back here quickly. It might pull it away far enough. But what if I... they are over the other side of the lab? You're going to bring them all here? No, I mean, I'll try to bring them up toward carbon dating. See what I mean? I'll go up all the way there, punch in a code. I'm punching the wrong code, so it won't open. 
but it will make a noise. Does it make a noise if we put the wrong code in? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, hopefully. What oh, it was cold, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. Maybe try to keep that quiet. Please. Yeah. But I th it at least it should beep at me wrong. If it gives a, 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 a noise when it's right, it better give a noise when it's wrong. Maybe we should make as little noise as possible. No, I know, but I'm just saying if we can pull them. Listen, it's a diversionary tactic. You try to pull the enemy into one direction so you can do something on the other side. Okay. okay. Do you see what I'm saying, though? Because otherwise they're going to come here no matter what. If we need to open that in order for it to make a noise, we'll let them in here. No, that's why I'm going to try the wrong. If it doesn't do anything, then I just come back quietly. If it does something, I will very quietly and quickly move back while you enter this code and then we do the same thing. Hopefully, it pulls them away from us. I won't enter the correct code. Either way, if it works or it doesn't work, same thing no matter what. Let's just go see if the wrong code does anything. Okay, let's go together. Uh, but if it, if it does something, then we're pulling... Uh, no, that still would work. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Okay. So I move up toward common dating. You move up towards common dating, slowly going through uh, the... While the... the uh, walls between the maintenance access are still reasonably thick they're a bit thinner than the regular walls and the ever since you've gotten into the lab everything has been dead quiet aside from the that strange metallic noises and so forth but as you get towards the bottom of uh, below carbon dating in that intersection you can see there is another um a passageway that intersects off and goes further kind of towards the uh past the chemistry and uh, materials lab uh, and there's another access panel further down uh, if you like you could actually go more towards the the lab storage uh kind of corner and it would take them a bit further away here or there which one do you think Oh, that might be better. Punch the wrong code in here. Okay. All right. I just one, one, just one, see one, it, one. See if it makes a noise. You enter the wrong code, and instead of the uh, fairly loud pitch robotic beeping that is loud in the silence, but not as loud as the uh, loud error code that just blares, and you get a very loud kind of, <laughs> and you hear like metallic scuttling you hear um not just the metallic like bending of metal you also hear the scrape above you on metal of something on foot moving in your direction and you also hear um as you are moving uh are you, are you moving further sorry are you moving further over to chem or back to where you wanted to come out further to chem okay oh further to chem okay yeah yeah so you're moving further to chem to repeat the thing okay uh, as as you're like as you're moving quietly and you you're hearing the movement of uh, of like claws on metal and the bending of metal like it's a cacophonous in this very quiet environment echoes throughout everywhere how you how many does it so there is at least bending and on top of us yes. so at least two of them we can definitely make out at least two you can be sure of I would say. yeah and uh, as you quickly start moving, uh, and quietly, obviously, uh, through the vents, uh, sorry, through the access tunnels to get to the further away part uh, near chemistry and materials, you do hear a very high-pitched, almost like a squeak. Uh, it's, it's almost mechanical and at regular intervals. Where from? From above you. Not the... Yeah, from just above. The fuck is that? Sounds like... A, a squeak. Yeah, yeah, I know. Doesn't matter. Let's hit this one. Okay, one, wait, one, wait, one. Wait, wait, wait. I stop. No, no, I, I stop before finishing. 
Sorry. It's just... You're good, you're good. <sighs> this is not the kind of pressure I'm used to. It's the same. Okay, it's, uh, it's... We're gonna do the code, come back the way, then go off towards the office. Exactly. Well, this idea is we're pulling everything in this direction. They went there, we're pulling them away, and then it'll give them even longer if they hear the other one. This is louder, though. Right. Okay. Do you... <sighs> Austin, start quietly and going now. I will catch up. Do not worry. Sure. Yes, get a lead. On the off chance I have to run, for whatever reason, you will have a head start, and you will be quieter. This is my job, after all. I don't remember putting this on your contract, but okay. Oh, well, we can discuss pay increases later. <laughs> okay. Go. I'll catch up. So, Austin goes down the hallway and uh, disappears around the corner. I give him a good 15 seconds. And after he goes around the corner and I know he's past the first maintenance panel, I hit the final one and enter and then immediately start quietly walking that way back. Quietly, but as quick as possible too. Oh yeah, we're speed walking. Um, as, as you hit the end of us and you immediately turn and start going, that same like error noise echoes throughout the station and you hear the same movement, but you're not as concentrated on it because you're also moving. Uh, so you hear that things are moving in that direction and there is actually like the clicking of, uh, of like something on the metallic above you that intersects with you as you go past. As, as, it, as it clicks directly over you, you kind of pause for a half second just so that just in case there's like vibrations or something, if you're too close, it could maybe. And then immediately, as soon as it's gone, you keep going and you rush around and you, you jink to the left and you go through that place and then you jink to the left again and you, you keep going until the next turn you take, you see Austin like kind of already there. Inputting the code. Enter. And there is a, not quite as loud, but still loud enough to echo a little bit around. A uh, quick succession of high-pitched beeps. There's a second, half second. And then the panel slides open. Austin, you pull yourself out. Um, you find yourself in the center of the four offices that overlook each other in the middle of a hallway that a uh, cross-section hallway that intersects um, I'm gonna put my hand down as I just check there's nothing immediate on me and put my hand yes. down and just get him out as quickly as possible yes. and then try and roll into one of the offices and as you uh, as you both come out and you start moving towards one of the offices just a random one you pick uh, you do hear some metallic folding coming closer something moving again through those vents and the door to the office slides open it's completely empty and you move in quickly and what's the door close the door there's a pause of maybe five ten seconds and then moving past you through one of the walls you think you hear the click 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 of claws on the metal on the floor moving past the offices heading in the direction you think of the sound that just emanated I'm trying to make as little sound as possible yeah and all I can hear is my heartbeat just like boom boom like louder than anything I'm waiting to see if it stops or continues on elsewhere i'm also listening to see if i hear a thud you hear a reasonably high-pitched chirp mecha almost mechanical with its timing uh, along with the 
cessation of footsteps. And it is chirp. 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 And then the footsteps, the claw steps, carry on further away, moving away from you. What is, why have you stopped? Um, how, how can we help? Then. Is, is, did I see anything on, on the chest? Okay. Did they have any weapons with them? Um, a metal pipe. A couple anything of wrenches. Anything sharp? We have to help them. He can't. Get yeah. a doctor. I'm not a doctor. Okay. Then, um. I'm. I'm a fraud. Okay. Just then. And did you give me the right amount of morphine? Am I going to die? I didn't know I was a fraud. Okay. I... I, I don't... Doc, look, no offense, but I don't have time for your crisis right now. Um, You're saying you can't help these people? Even if I was a doctor, I don't think I could. You see this? Mm. Right. You see, so you see that? What's gonna happen to them? That's how it starts. And it nests something. Then <laughs> they force their way out. You hear emphasized by the end of her words, off in the distance, a heavy thud, a cut off scream and the sound of uh, heavy moving footsteps uh, echoing down the corridors with a inhuman hiss and following a uh, more rapid um, sounds of something heavy running through the corridor as well. Lock the door. Lock the door. Oh. Yeah, I, I shut the door for now. Hit the button and the door slides close. Right. If what happened to the other person is going to happen to these guys, then. Yeah. These, these, these are a lot smaller. They start can we, can we put them out of their misery? Like, can we do something? Can we at least. We can't save them, can we? Kill the thing. I'm gonna pick up that metal bar. Go. It comes out around here. No. Are you sure you can? What else can we do? Sunshine caves in the chest and. I'll help. Uh, After the first one. Yeah, Jim picking up as Sunshine and Jim, you both sit back completely silent for a small period of time, recovering after that, both sitting down in the room, the camera fades.
was that? I think it's... I think it's a third one. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was making some of the squeaking noise you heard. It was moving when I was on the other side. And again here, it's squeaking and then I hear clicking, like the, the walking, and then I hear squeaking. And, and then the walking. Do you have any idea what the fuck that would be? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, what... How much do you know about genetics? <sighs> okay, you know what genetics is. Right? Yeah, I know what genetics are. Okay, have you ever heard of something called DNA reflex? No. Okay, so DNA reflex is kind of like stealing DNA information from a host, for instance, and growing that into your own DNA while you digest. Oh. Okay, you know I told you the life cycles we've got before. Right. After the... We call them facehuggers. It deposits something during that stage, which is what we're calling the chest booster for obvious reasons. Mm. It grows inside the host body. It grows inside the host body. And it can take on traits from its host. Said clicking, squeaking, kind of like a bat. No, it's a fucking echolocation. <sighs> this test wasn't complete. We have <sighs> we have a lot of animals that we've been testing on dogs, cats, household. Pets, um, bats, oh, amphibians, frogs, <laughs> leeches, chameleons, but there is, uh, test 7 for beta was digested in a bat. Oh, we were trying to... Trying to maybe get some traits, like being able to traverse in the dark without vision. Is it hopefully blind? I mean, like I said, the test wasn't complete, but I would assume in normal lighting situations, it wouldn't use its eyes at all. Why would it need to? Right. Okay. That... Uh, it's not a good thing, but that uh, that could work in our favor. How does that work in our favor? It can hear where we are. Well, if we don't move and let it go by, it might. I, okay. I don't want to do it. I'm just saying. I don't know might. how to break this to you, but we need to move out of this office. I know that. I'm just saying, once we move out of this office, if we hear that squeaking, we stop. I'm guessing they're faster than us, right? Yeah, okay. So we can't run from it. So that might be our best fucking chance. The other ones seem to run to noise. So if we move quietly, we hear squeaking, we stop. <laughs> it might walk past us. Or we might die, but either way, that might be our best chance. Listen, I don't like it. But that's good information to know and to lean on if we have to. Do you... I hate to ask this. What are the other ones that you were working on definitively? We had a lot of success with... Uh, a, a chameleon oh. could blend into its surroundings wasn't perfect, but... But it's 
Simple Good. patterns, colors. Oh, good, and it's us. I love our matte gray walls that we have. This, um, the leech program was very successful. It could, it could feed on strictly blood. Um, it, it, yeah. Uh, the frog test, um, I don't, I don't know where we've gotten with that. Uh, the house cat one, it just sat around and didn't do much. Well, that would have been really nice if they had a ton of those. I'm trying to joke, Land. Okay. I was really hoping that wasn't a joke and there'd just be one sitting in the corner doing nothing. <sighs> okay. All right. Um. You said to, you called Marines, right? It's, Two weeks. Uh, it's usually about three, but I gave my... I gave my security code. I can okay. probably get that bumped up. All right. Um... Don't mean to be defeatist here, but on the off chance we don't make it, they're going to need to know what you just told me. Can't you... You... Can't what? Tell them things after we're dead and the things have, everything's gone to shit? You haven't told me that much, Austin. Yeah, but... Kinda died on me a little bit. Kinda owed you that. Thank you. And I think we owe it to them, so they have a tiny bit of information going in, so they don't fucking die the moment they step on this damn ship. Station thing. They're gonna see them. <sighs> telling them a they little capabilities. Them. They're marines. They do this. I'm a, time. Gonna... I'm a marine. I was one. You've never been on a bug hunt before? No, not like this. That's why they need to fucking know, because if I know I'll die in this situation, you told them if they shoot the fucking things, they explode in acid. Marines aren't used to that shit. That's never been encountered before. Doesn't matter your training. They've not gone up against this. They've gone up against people. Okay, okay. I won't tell them security codes, okay? I'm gonna tell them what they might run into. Fuck, I'm gonna tell them where the supplies I left are. Okay, don't talk about genetics and, and DNA reflex. Just tell them what. I'll tell what them these that there are different variants. Do. Variants, how about that? Sorry, it's... I'm sorry. <sighs> okay. Alright. Um... I think there's a... Yeah, there's a console over there. Okay. Um... I'm not gonna put... I'm not gonna put an access code on it. Alright. I want them to be able to access it without issue. Just give your clearance. Oh. And I lean over to the terminal and I, um, I just mute the terminal. <laughs> So it doesn't make any noise. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Okay. I'm gonna get this. Uh, let's see the variants. Um. There aren't weapons on this station, so they shouldn't bother looking for them. Uh. Supplies in the foyer and maintenance access. They are. Uh. Noise driven. Alarms will pull them to it. They can use it as a distraction. Ah, uh, they don't like fire. Um, okay. All right. Please. Maybe, maybe practice sneezing into your arm. You know, health safety and all. Like, our health. Thanks. Okay. Uh, right. Um... Uh, opening it up, I'm making it accessible to all who access this terminal, and recording. This is Sergeant Grey Landon, head security of the Dramacula. Uh, uh, I'm leading a 
this message for the Marines for when they arrive. Hopefully you haven't run into them yet, but I'm assuming you have. There are a number of aliens on this station. They're not fucking cats. They're not human. I'm gonna call creatures. them creatures. Creatures. That whatever the fuck they are. There are creatures running about. They move through vents. We don't know if they can access doors outside of the automatic ones, but they definitely can force open vents and move through them. They're fast. They're big. Maybe. Really, really big. Their blood is acid. If you shoot them, they will release a defense mechanism that will burn through skin that can be uh, dealt with via a strong base, baking soda, the like. If you can, keep some on you because regular medic will not work for it. And there's at least three on the side of the laboratory and probably uh, maybe three by the time you're on here. On the other side. Uh, there are variants of kinds that might be out. There's at least one that can use echolocation. There's one that feeds on blood. And there's some sort of amphibious one based uh, some like, something like a frog. We don't know what it does. And uh, uh, one that can camouflage itself like a chameleon. They are attracted to sound, all of them, and will move to the loudest noise. You can use noise distractions to pull them away from you temporarily, but if they hear another sound, they'll move toward that next. And fire, they don't do well with fire. You might actually be able to hurt them in a significant way if you find any sort of flamer, uh, uh, maybe a torch, an aerosol, something. If you get this message, hopefully we've made it away. But if we're dead, I'll leave, I'll do my best to leave my security clearance on my body. So that you might be able to escape. By then, hopefully we've purged the lab. And that way at least there won't be more of them for you to take out. Good luck. Hoorah. I'm not leaving them to die, Austin. Right? It would be my security clearance, not yours. Okay? I'm not gonna do I don't want that to happen, and I'm not planning on that happening, okay? I'm talking absolute worst fucking situation. They have seven or more to deal with. They're gonna need that to live and take them out, okay? No, look, we're gonna deal with it, and they're gonna I take know. us from here and yes. clean up. That's the plan. That's what we're going to do, all right? What are we gonna do? We did the right thing, though. <clears throat> so, um, how did you end up here? <laughs> um, I was with Raya Adams, um, and I can't remember where she worked, but um, I watched Jane get skewered. Raya and I we were running towards the cryopods, and 
my chips. She had some distance on me, so I ran into the ran towards the cryopods and welded the door shut on me. With the aliens still out there. Um, it's every vendor for themselves out here. Um, I mean, I'm angry, but I can't blame her. Yeah. Um, um, before that, before we, before we were with Jane, um, it's me, Raya. Landon and Austin. We were we were in the med bay when saw the first chest burster happen. And we were trying to kill it. Well we were. Austin Austin wasn't. He, he knew that he had those things here. They had them here on purpose. Yeah. Multiple. Apparently we're... They knew there was a chance this could happen and we were all... Collateral. Because the company could advance and profit and whatever the fuck that corporate bastard is interested in. So he didn't kill it, but Ray was trying to smash it with a tray. Raya was swinging a fucking oxygen tank around trying to crush it. And it went off into one of the vents. Wait a minute. An oxygen tank? Yeah. I've spent faith when people have chest injuries or yeah, yeah, yeah. reduce yeah. oxygen deaths. Yeah. Good. We need, we need to we need to kill these things. If we're gonna survive, I mean, we can lock down as best we want, but... I mean, you've seen them. And what they can do. Without oxygen tank, I could... I could make it happen. Ow. Well, oxygen, I don't know if you're aware, it's pretty, um, pretty flammable. Um, I think I can make something more. All you need is a source, ignition, and fuel. Yeah. And... I'm good. You can make an make it work but it's how we get on I mean, will, will that work with them like does fire touch them I think so I mean I think it, it like it got the one I got didn't seem to like it but I don't think it got it good enough but I think I think I think I can get it this time. With the oxygen tank, I can make a bigger explosion. I can make sure. I can make it work. I think I can make it work. 
the, the, the med bay is near the... It's towards the labs. When, mm. when, when I was with... Gray, Austin, Mariah, and Jane, we, 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 we split up. Um, Austin and Gray went towards the labs to see if they could shut it down. Or at least Austin was, like, Gray was going to force Austin to do so. The only way through was the hydro pump. And I can't swim. So, that's why Raya, Jane, and I were going to try and head back to the hangar. But then... That thing jumped in between us. And... We had to run. Oh. Um. If we can so get you... back there, do you think you can... Do you think you can try and, like, spill out some of the water or something? So we can, yeah. so we can get through. Yeah, I can see what I can do. I can... I can move some stuff if they... If I have access. If, if things are still working, then I, I should be able to do something, at least. Um, but a lot of the levels... Change the flow or something. Like if, I've, if I've got access, I. That's my I, job, right? <laughs> this is what I do. I can, I can, I can fix it. I can, I can, I can do something. But... No, okay. okay. I, can't, I can't swim, but if I can, if there's something on the walls or the ceiling that I can grab and pull myself for a long way, or if we can bring one of the oxygen tanks with us, if that would work. I mean, it. You know better how they work for medical than I do, but. I mean, it wouldn't be a, like a sealed fit, but we can use the, the. I've got, I've got. The, 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 there's regulators when we when you give um nitrous oxide entonox, the laughing gas. You you seal your lips around it and you press the button, almost like a scuba diving regulator. We 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 can use that. We can. What's that? Right. So we we'll get to the med bay. Can you use the oxygen? There's plenty in there. We should have enough left to make it explode after, and then you can. And there should be less. There should be less things on that side. There was, there was a hard wall lock. There. Ben, Ben, he went and he slammed the security doors down. I don't. Um, I don't know what's on that side. But if, maybe it's safer than this side. Yeah, yeah, mate. And hopefully, Ray and Austin are still alive on that side, and we're not alone. Okay. Ready is the plan. Okay. You head to the med bay. You get the oxygen tank in the regulator center. Okay. I'll... I'll... It's going to be hard for me to move through hydro with my leg. I might just have to send you through and, and wait on my side for you to come back with friends and then... I said we're staying together. Like, if, if needs be, we'll... We'll, no, I can't. we'll, we'll, split, we'll splint your leg or something. Well, you, you can't swim and I... I'm not able to currently. And you're not going to be able to pull me through. What if I go through with like a rope or something? We we attach it and then I come back and then you can pull like pull yourself along it, or oh oh, I'll come back. Get you. Oh, I'll send. I'll, I'll get. I'll get grades. Come back. He can swim. Even one of the one of them can come back. So when I can swim, can come back and get me, and then, and then we'll be okay. good. So that's the plan. Okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna leave you behind. Thank you. But it's okay for you to leave me behind. It's okay. okay. Let's go. So you go to the door. 
in a little time, and you press the button, the door slides open soundlessly. Slice in the forest, and then we move. General, very quiet background sounds of the station, and nothing else. Let's head to medical. Head out the door into the hallway of the executive bedrooms, sneaking through, listening, stopping occasionally. You get to the central area, top floor, where the stairs go down. Slowly descend down the stairs, then find yourself at the bottom of the stairs in the main lobby area again. Slip out into the main lobby area, and as you are heading towards the doors, that will lead you into the hallway towards Med Bay. The sunshine, you see a quick darting movement uh, in between yourself and Jim as something pushes out from under the floor and attaches to the back of his left ankle. It's like the heel. <laughs> and he goes down with a clash and a, cra and a clatter and slowly pushing up from the floor, pushing away one of the floor panelings, that big, bloated, with arms pulling itself out, um, is the same thing you saw in the maintenance access. Jim, don't, please. I reach out and I, I grab her hand Go. and I try and stab my makeshift pole down towards yes. this thing to yeah, get the, it off me. As you as you stab down towards it, you kind of uh, <laughs> open it very slightly. A few drops of like um, this strange blood like fall and hiss on the metal, and the, uh. the thing retracts back into its mouth as it starts pulling itself towards you. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, move. Uh, as you try and pull yourself up, uh, your legs give way. You have an injury on in your right leg and you think possibly something's happened to your heel, to your ankle. It's not holding your weight at all. No, come on, stand up, stand up. And it nice. keeps pulling itself towards you and the, the tongue thing creeps out again and darts towards you. And no. attaches to the back of your uh at the back of your thigh this time. No! Jim! Jim! Oh god! I need you! Come on! Stand up! Please. And you hear metallic thuds from above you as the metal bends as things move through the vents towards these sounds. You gotta go. We gotta go. You gotta go. You no. gotta leave me. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm still trying to yeah. get this thing off me as best I can. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Make sure you stay alive. Get one for me. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna go into the med bay and get the two oxygen tanks. Yeah. Uh, you... I'm trying to move myself in that direction, but still fighting. Yeah, know? you uh, essentially you spin around and you start like whacking at it and hitting it. You feel the strength draining from you slightly as well as the uh, the tube tongue thing is like pulsing and uh within a 
couple of seconds. There's a couple of metallic clangs as uh, Sunshine is back and kind of slams down the tank. One of the tanks on the um, on the tongue. It, it there's a small kind of screechy sound as it retracts again, uh, det detaches from your thigh. I'm gonna turn it on and open the top cap to 15 liters so it's spraying out. I'm gonna hug Jim. I'm so sorry. Look at the fucking bitches. Make sure that. Make sure you make it okay. And there's like a sliding metallic sound from above you. As you look up, you see like this elongated head push through the vent and just slowly start to descend from above. I, I push her limply, but I push her as best I can. Go! Oh. I'm um. gonna pick up my tank the regular era run towards the park. <laughs> and sunshine stumbles and boots off down the hallway and around the corner and out of sight as the strange bloated one is slowly pulling itself out it finally self it finally gets itself out from under the floor and starts pulling itself towards you you hear a thud from behind you as one lands behind you the hiss of the oxygen tank as the room is filled with flammable material. I'll see you soon. I like the leech straight in its face. Suck on this. running through into the hydro access as the doors slide closed. Sunshine hears a woomph and the station is rocked slightly as she steps in to the hydro tube and slowly submerges herself in 